All right, good morning. Uh, like I said, my name is Captain Matthew Villa. I'm from the 263rd Army Air Missile Defense Command. Uh, I am the JLN's Plans and Coordination Officer. I'm gonna go over a quick brief statement and then I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. What I'd like to do is about 20 minutes of questions and then let me get to site to get some more details. Uh, I do have a couple important points. Uh, number one, I don't have a lot of answers on the whys and hows this happened. Uh, it's important to know that this is under investigation uh, and that's one of our first priorities. In fact, we have three priorities this morning. Um, first is obviously to secure the site, uh, make sure it is secure and uh, no further damage or any kind of incidents uh, further occur. The second one is, like I said, there will be a full safety investigation that will commence uh, as early as today. Uh, we have safety personnel on site and we have more safety uh, investigators oncoming. And then last, and this is the most important part, is we're here for a safe and secure recovery of all the equipment uh, to make sure that um, it is, is properly removed and, and done in the most uh, hasty and uh, easy manner. I'd like to say we appreciate all the state and federal support we've gotten so far. Uh, that includes the uh, Pennsylvania State Police, the Pennsylvania National Guard, and the other command authorities that we have been uh, working with. Uh, we would like to uh, apologize to the local community for the loss of power and any other inconveniences that this could have caused. Um, but we do appreciate the fact that there was no loss of life um, or any major property damage, at least that we are aware of right now. Um, if there is further questions or information, I will be on site and um, I refer you to norad.mil. With that, it is raining. Um, I will answer any questions. And like I said, I have about 20 minutes to do so. A quick question. You told us uh, back in February there was a one in a million chance that this blimp could get away. Roger that. Do you want to revise that answer? No, I don't, I don't necessarily want to revise it. Like I said, uh, the hows and whys of that, what that caused versus the percentage that, that NORAD did brief is under investigation and we will get more information back to you um, about that. So no idea at this point how it got away? Uh, there is, like I said, that is continues to be under investigation and I personally do not have the details. But I will get them to you as, as appropriate. How would you describe the, the wreckage? Okay, that's a good question. We've identified two sites where the wreckage is. Uh, there's the main body, which is at one site, and then several hundred meters away is the uh, tail section. Uh, from what I understand, most of the wreckage is intact. Uh, it is secure, and it is mostly in trees, um, and it is in a difficult um, to access location right now. And is it sensitive material? Is it something you wouldn't want the public to get its hands on? Um, there is material on board that we have already secured. Um, and I also would emphasize that right now safety and secu uh, security is the most important thing to us. Um, and we are obviously um, making sure that everything here is safe and not a danger to the public. Um, no, and as part of the recovery effort, what we have is uh, security on site so that we know we have accounted for everything and we are um, actually physically securing it. But it is all still here. There's been nothing removed from site. What will it be removed? That's a good question. That's the, we are in the planning stages for that now. Uh, like I said, obviously our first step is just to make sure everything is secure, which is largely already done. Uh, the second piece is to do that safety investigation, and then obviously we're going to plan for the safe removal. Uh, that planning will be ongoing today. The subject matter expertise uh, is here on site at this point, and uh, that's where we'll be going. I don't actually have a, a date time that that will all be done. Days? It, it is possible. Um, like I said, I, I don't have more details, but I will get you that uh, throughout the day as I get from some of the people who are working on it. Has power been restored? I do not have information about power. All I um, really know about is the safety and security of the site. Yeah. How heavy the material is in total? Yes, um, the material spread out is approximately um, 10,000 pounds or so. Um, so that's, that's basically in total about the weight. You said fortunately nobody was killed, nobody was injured. Of course, that is a fortunate fact. Sure. Us. But it dragged that cable for many, many miles. That's a fairly heavy cable. It also came down in a rural area. It could have come down in a populated area. We have been told that there is no danger of having these blimps fly up down there in Aberdeen. Clearly, there is a danger. Well, all I could say is that the house and wives are under investigation, including the house and wives. Uh, why it broke and uh, why it uh, it came down over this distance. But this is a potential threat to public safety. I, w I am not prepared to say that right now. What I am prepared to say, though, is that it is under investigation. Still don't have any idea why it started to deflate. 
no, very good question. That is also under investigation why it started to deflate and come down. Will it all be removed by ground or will, will any air? Again, that's part of the planning process that's happening right now. I've got the subject matter expertise uh, down there in the ravine uh, looking for the best possible way to do removal. But NORAD never did anything to deflate it. That's correct. There has been no, there was no positive action for deflation um, at all. So is it unlikely that the thing will go back to Aberdeen by today? Correct. There is no chance that the thing will be removed and go back to Aberdeen today. It's going to be a process of, uh, of, of a couple days, uh, possibly a week. And is it all Army personnel that's handling this and the state troopers are securing the scene? Yeah, good question. We have um, the, 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 the good fortune to have the state troopers on scene to uh, help us support with security. We do have Army personnel now here to support security, uh, both from the um, Aberdeen soldiers and the soldiers from the local National Guard unit. Um, and then we also have a um, set of uh, subject matter experts, contractors, and um, engineers who are on site to um, assist us as well. Would the Army be responsible for, for restitution for damages done by this? I'd like to leave that question to later. I would refer you to um, NORAD.mil uh, for further information about um, anything of that nature. I will try and get you that more information as we go forward, and, and I'm still trying to find that out. Captain, you said it's in two pieces. Uh, what condition is the balloon? Is it are there holes in it? Is it torn? Is it, how would you describe it? Okay, um, I haven't actually looked at it personally myself, except from pictures that I've gotten from my personnel. Uh, my understanding is it is in two pretty much intact pieces, and um, uh, like I said, a lot of it is uh, hanging in security into the trees that are in the ravine right now. Um, I don't have full details on that. I do understand that they have, well, I know for a fact that they have secured that radar and have had eyes on it. So, um, and like I said, it is, it, is, it is mostly intact at this point. After uh, you and others expressing such confidence that this one could not get away, is there a sense of frustration, disappointment? Um, I can't say that there's not. Um, but basically right now what we are doing is focusing on the security and the uh, recovery. So we're basically moving forward with what we need to do uh, versus reflecting. But I'm sure there will be time for that. Was, was there ever a time when you were at the base that you said, gee, I hope this thing doesn't float away. What are we going to do then? That's a good question. We, we did have um, an emergency response plan that we rehearsed with the local counties uh, before we inflated the first aerostat. But to be honest with you, um, we had to uh, make measures and make communications known up here into Pennsylvania, but we did plan and have contingencies for a breakaway um, that we rehearsed with the local first responders down there in the Maryland area. Yeah, and what was that plan? Okay, the, um, I could get you more details on that plan. In fact, that plan is for public release. Um, I just don't happen to have it on me right now. And what, what about the second balloon? There's two of these things that are flying there. What about the second balloon? Roger that. So after this incident occurred yesterday, um, we were directed to secure the uh, first balloon, and just for everyone's knowledge, it was actually the second balloon that is here. Uh, the first balloon that went up is, is still there in Aberdeen. It is secure on the mooring station for normal operations. Is it, is it secure at an altitude? No, it is secure on the, on the ground on the mooring station. Are you aware of any um, repairs that were supposed to have been done to the tether to this uh, blimp? Uh, negative. I am not aware of any uh, scheduled repairs or anything of that matter. Um, and again, that would be pending investigations. Is there any chance that someone let it leave, untied the tether? Uh, I don't want to speculate on any kind of cause. Um, just knowing what I know about the system, that would be very difficult. Though. There's no reason to believe there's foul play involved here. At this point, there is absolutely no reason, and of course, everything's pending investigation.